Okay, I'm going to do a brief history of Finland, and we have the little <coughs> picture here that shows where Finland is. And <coughs> I'm just going to cover what's more important towards the uh, weapons development here. Um, Finland was under control of Sweden through the Middle Ages, but in 1809, Finland was incorporated into the Russian Empire as the Autonomous Grand Duchy of Finland. In 1907, Finland became the first European state to grant all adult citizens the right to vote, and was the first in the world to give all adult citizens the right to run for public office. Kind of unusual. Now here's where it kind of gets in our weapons thing. Following the 1917 Russian Revolution, Finland declared itself independent. Now, this is before the end of World War I. So it was when the Russian Revolution threw a monkey wrench and made World War I a lot more interesting, the Finns declared themselves independent. <coughs> Now, in 1918, the fledgling state was divided by civil war, with the Bolshevik-leaning le uh, Red Guard, supported by Soviet Russia, fighting the White Guard, supported by the German Empire, which means the war has not ended, Germany was still functioning, and they sent troops in there. Okay, after a brief attempt to establish a kingdom, the country became a republic. Okay, and during World War II, the Finns sought the Soviet Union in the Winter War and the Continuation War and lost some land but maintained independence. Okay, this is the one little section here. Uh, you know, so we have to bear in mind that they broke away, declared themselves independent, and became a uh, independent country. Now we'll go and try to hit on another point of the history here in a second. Okay, back on the Mosin site there's a little bit more of it here that's more details. The Finnish Civil War soon broke out and ran from January 17th to May 15th, 1918, pitting Finnish whites, non-Bolsheviks, against Finnish Reds, pro-Bolshevik. There were over 70,000 Russian troops still inside Finland. Their involvement in the Finnish Civil War was minor, and only an estimated seven to 10,000 soldiers from these garrisons took part in the fighting. And it is interesting that the Germans also played a role when 10,000 plus man Baltic Sea Division committed troops to the white side. The German soldiers played key roles in battles in and around Finnish areas, you know. The German's uh, commander also played a part in fighting that would lead to the independence of the Baltic states. In the end, the Whites were able to vanquish the Reds, and the modern nation of Finland got its start. So, that's how they became an independent state. Now, what kind of follows through is... This, uh, when you go back to the other thing, Finland is basically an agrarian country, okay? So there isn't any huge manufacturing there. It's something we have to bear in mind. So when they go and they decide on what rifle they're going to arm that their army with, these are factors that come in, the history and the fact that they don't have a huge manufacturing base much like, uh, like say for example at the end of World War One, Czechoslovakia had uh, industry and manufacturing uh, facilities you know there they started to make guns and export them. Uh, Poland kinda didn't really have much but started to uh, build a manufacturing base and an arms uh, to produce arms, um, but that was kind of curtailed by World War II. And of course, Hungary always had arsenals and you know industry and so stuff like that. So after the breakup uh, or the creation of all these different countries post World War One, this is a fact we have to bear in mind. If Finland did not 
after it broke away from Russia, end up with a huge, uh, already established industrial base there. So that's about all that is kind of interesting in what we're going to uh, discuss here about the rifles. But that gives us an idea, and, and also it's information that will fit in to when we talk about the, dis, you know, the procedures and what was done historically when they developed these rifles.